What's up, YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another video. I have a number of CGC graded comic books that I've picked up over the last few months. Some of them actually date back to last year. They were CGC 9.8 pre-orders. Some of them are really key book books. Some of them are very rare on the census, and some of them are not. But I thought I would show you a few of them and talk more about the books themselves, why I picked them up, things like that. The first one I wanted to show you is this one. I just got this one in a couple days ago, and it is an epic one. I really, really like it. This is Amazing Spider-Man number 281 from 1986. I had this book as a child. I remember specifically reading this one many, many times, and it's the second appearance of the Cinder Sinister Syndicate. And the first appearance of this team was in the previous issue, number 280. I don't like that cover nearly as much as I like this one, though. This colors on this really pop. The kind of bluish tint to Spider-Man is amazing. This is one of only 68 9.8 graded books for this one on the census for CGC. The Center Sinister Syndicate is composed of Hydro Man, Rhino, Speed Demon, Beetle, and Boomerang. And look how great that cover looks. That is just a gorgeous cover. So I saw this one come up for auction, and I was like, you know what? I have to have this. I, I remembered it. It brought back so many memories. And given that it, there's only 68 of these in the 9.8 grade, I was like, this is a no-brainer. I'm going to buy it. And so that is one of them. The other one was that I'm going to start with is War of the Bounty Hunters Alpha Number 1. This is the In Hyuk Lee East Side Comics Edition. And uh, it's a great Boba Fett cover with him kind of angry i'm assuming that this is like really you're gonna steal han solo and carbonite from me uh you can just see him plotting his revenge there's also a virgin cover of this but i, I like the trade dress better and if i'm being completely honest the the virgin was sold out <laughs> so i got the trade dress but I, I didn't pay hardly anything for it i think it was 65 bucks and that's probably about all it's worth but i, I do like it um it might have been 75 i can't remember but anyway, this has this book's not really done much, but I'd, I'd like it. I think that long term, it's just a nice kind of Boba Fett cover to have. Uh, Inhyuk Lee really knocked it out of the park, I think, with that cover. But a really cool one, and uh, nice to have another kind of cool Boba Fett cover. This is that's just really. I, I don't think this is going to be a key book or ever be a good investment, but I just love the way it looks. Next up, if you guys watch the new Disney Plus Moon Knight show, it is great. I really enjoy it. And you've already seen this book. This is Moon Knight number three from the latest volume. This is the first full appearance of Hunter's Moon, kind of a new uh, protagonist. Well, I saw this one come up for auction. And this is Moon Knight number seven from the same series. This is the Raza variant cover, variant edition of Moon Knight number seven. It's a brand new comic, so this is not like some, uh, you know, incredible piece of collecting history or anything but i saw this cover and this is moon knight in his mr knight kind of outfit you know if you know anything about moon knight you know that he's kind of a schizophrenic and has multiple personalities and one of his personalities is mr knight where he wears his business suit this cover i fell in love with immediately i mean look at the detail on his boots and how the blood kind of you know the splatters there and you can just see him getting ready to lay into this thug who is off screen the bullet casings there's everything about this cover is incredible look at look at the shadow and how it's got moon knight's traditional costume uh as a shadow for the mr knight costume so i i don't know what i don't know what this the long-term value of this book is but it is moving up and i think that it's a classic it's an instant classic in my opinion sometimes i just see a cover and I'm like, yes, I have to have that book. And this is one of them. So again, you know, this is a little bit of fear of missing out slash new comic book fever. But I, I saw that cover and I was like, you know what? I have to have it. And it goes really nicely with uh, number three from that same series. It's I don't think number seven is a key issue. It's really three, nine and ten are the, the big key issues. But uh, but this this cover just screams instant classic to me. Next up, I have a, a couple of Star Wars adaptations to show you. And I might have already shown this on the channel. I can't remember. If I did, I apologize. But this is Rogue One uh, adaptation number one. This is the standard cover. I believe I've already shown this to you, so I'm not going to belabor that too much. But obviously, that's the first appearance of Cassian Andor, Saul Guerrero, Jen Erso, K2SO, Director Krennic. And by the way, Director Krennic is rumored 
uh, and Saul Guerrero are both rumored to be coming back in the new Andor show. So we will see if that happens or not. But I think I've already shown you that one. But that's a, a beautiful book and I think worth picking up. The other one, the other one I got is this one. This is a very tough one to find. This is Star Wars Solo Adaptation Number 1. This is the first comic book appearance of Kira, as well as Dryden Voss. Who's, who was the enemy there? They, I don't think anything's going to happen with him. But the the big the big reason I got this one is because of Kira. Now the funny story is, and this is just shows you how weird the comic book market is. We talked in in previous videos about how Amelia Clark, who played uh, who who played Kira in the movie, uh, how she was being rumored to be coming back to Disney Plus to to reprise the role, and that still may happen. But anyway, when that Rumor was really hot and heavy. Uh, an issue of this in a 9.8 grade was at auction on eBay. I bid $400 on it because I was like, I want to get it. And it was clearly a case of FOMO, right? I bid $400 and lost. I lost on it and it was sold at 406 So I was like, well, whatever. That's too much to pay for it anyway. I had second thoughts about what I was thinking. So then the rumors died down, right? Amelia Clark's now rumored to be coming back into the MCU to play somebody. I can't remember who. So totally unrelated to Star Wars. And so the rumors for Kira coming back have, have kind of uh, cooled off a little bit. So then this issue, this exact book, was at auction, and I won it for $258. <laughs> I mean, that's a massive price difference if you think about it, where I, I, I bid 400 and lost, and then I bid 258 and I won. So it's it's just crazy how the comic book market, if you just got to time it right and not get fear of missing out, which I'm guilty of all the time. Uh, but this this book, I think, was a great deal. There's only about uh, 40 to 50 of these on the census. I forgot to look up the exact number. Uh, but in terms of this book, this book is, doesn't have a big print run, and not a number of them have hit a 9.8 grade. I'm sure that some people are sitting on lots and lots of copies of this, but um, uh, to get to get one of the you know 50 or 60 or so or less uh, in the 9.8, it might have been in the 40s actually, uh, is great. So now I've got both adaptations. Now I'd like to get Force Awakens adaptation number one, which is the first appearance of uh, Ray and. Uh, Kylo Ren, I'd like to get that one as well at some point, just to kind of round out the uh, Disney Star Wars movie adaptation run. But it's really nice to have both of these, and they look so great together. Now it's time to show you a couple of big boy non-Star Wars books. These are a couple of monsters, and both of them are first appearance books. Before you get too excited, no, I did not get a first print Ultimate Fallout 4. That's like a, a $3,000 to $3,500 book. But I did get the second print. This is the second printing. This is the first appearance, obviously, of the new Spider-Man, Miles Morales. And the second prints are, are actually still pretty reasonable. There are less of them in the 9.8 than the first print. It is an easier uh, 9.8 to get than the first print. But uh, I got this one for a pretty good deal in my mind. I paid five oh five for it. And I don't mind sharing that. But, I mean, this hit like 900 or I think the very peak... This second print hit $1,200, believe it or not. Somebody paid $1,200 for a, 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 a second print 9.8 of Ultimate Fallout 4. I did not pay that. I paid $505. But I think that, you know, as Ultimate Fallout 4, the first print gets more and more out of people's budget. I mean, like I said, it's going for $3,000 to $3,500 $3, now. That the second print will probably be the next best investment. And uh, that fits my collecting budget a lot better. So it's nice to have that one. I also have the other cover, the Pacelli. I, I can't pr pronounce the name. Uh, second print. I've got that one at CGC right now being pressed and, and cleaned and, and graded. I think it's only going to get a 9.6, but we'll see. Uh, next up, we've got Teen Titans 12. I got a fantastic deal on this one. Uh, Teen Titans 12, the first print. This is the first full appearance of the Batman Who Laughs. Uh, he's kind of a, an expanded universe, alternate reality mix of Batman and the Joker. He's a, he's a big villain. And, you know, the reason I decided to go ahead and get it now is, number one, it's come way back down. It's a, it's a really cold book right now. Um, it hit eight or $900 in the first print uh, very, very, fairly recently. Well, I got it for about uh, half that. I got it for about half that. It's not a super good 9.8. Mine's got a couple of spine ticks. It's not perfect, but given the price I paid for it, I'm very happy with that. And 
my reasoning for getting it now is that you know we we all saw spider-man no way home do do such a, a big box office and that really covers multiverse and kind of alternate universes and given that it did such a big box office my thinking is that dc is probably going to copy them at some point and have a multiverse version for the for the dc universe and I could see them doing kind of multi, a multiverse. And if they do a multiverse for the DC continuity, they're going to have Batman who laughs in there. He's, he's the biggest villain within DC Comics for in the last 15 to 20 years. Uh, this book dates back from November of 2017. But he's easily the coolest and the most entertaining villain from DC books uh, you know, in modern times. And, and so if they go, if they go the multiverse route, I'm not saying it'll be anytime soon, but if they do it, they're, they're going to copy, you know, Marvel and do a multiverse. And if they do it, they have to have the Batman who laughs as the main villain uh, for, for that kind of movie, whenever it happens. So I decided to get it now and I like the book a lot and I got a great deal on it. It's not a perfect 9.8, but it's it's a I call it like a bottom of the barrel 9.8 if there's such a thing, and uh, it's got a couple of very minor spine ticks, but it's a great cover and it's a very difficult one to get in a 9.8, and I got such a great deal on it. I got I timed the absolute bottom I think for this book uh, to get it for the price I did, and it's a it's a beautiful cover. So very happy to have it. If, if this is outside of your budget, uh, there's a foil version. There's also a second printing that are both, you know, 150 to 200 dollars, but this is a villain that I'm a big fan of, the Batman who laughs. Next up, I got a couple of really nice High Republic related Star Wars books. These are fantastic pickups. I'm really happy with them. I want to say thank you to Tom Hogan, who is my Patreon supporter and friend and subscriber, and he also donates a lot of those sliding acrylic cases from case shells that he that he owns, the company that he owns. Again, those case shells fit any kind of modern figures, and he also has the clamshells. So make sure to check him out. The, in the description to my video is his email. But anyway, he traded me this one that he got back from CGC. He got two of the Walmart editions of High Republic number one. And again, this is the first appearance of Keep Trinis Skier, Loden Great Storm, Stellan Geos, Vernestra Rowe, as well as a number of other characters. But this I, this Walmart variant is so great. And it's one I've been wanting for a while. And uh, Tom had two copies of it. So we traded. I sent him a couple. I sent him two books. Uh, and I can't remember which ones they were now. But uh, well, I know one of them was one of the free comic book day books uh, for High Republic. But anyway, he traded me this one. It's a gorgeous cover. I'm so happy to have that one as part of my collection. It's, it's one of my favorite High Republic covers, that Walmart edition. So um, that's one I, def I definitely pick up while it's cheap right now. The other one is The Big Boy. This is a really good book. This is High Republic Adventures Annual number one. And this is the standard cover, the least expensive of them. But uh, this has a number of really important first appearances if you guys know the uh, High Republic universe. It has Bell Zetafar and his Charhound Ember. It also has the first appearance of Indira Stokes, as well as a couple of other key characters that are off the top of my head. But the big reason to get this is because of Bel Zetafar. He, he is one of the main, main characters within the High Republic universe. And this annual was not printed in, in very large numbers. Uh, there's an IDW online exclusive. There's also a Things from Another World online exclusive. I've got two of those that are being pressed right now. I do not expect them to hit a 9.8 because Things from Another World, uh, they sent me a couple of really garbage copies. It's probably my last time I'm going to ever order from them. But uh, anyway, uh, the, the, this book is definitely expensive. Uh, I, it sold as high as $400 in the 9.8 grade, uh, but I picked it up for less than half that and it has since sold again for a little over $300. So I was very happy to pick it up for the price I did because it has done nothing except go up really in price. So be on the lookout for this because it's still early right now for this one. More of these will be coming up uh, over the next few months because it, it just came out in December of 2021. But uh, th this book is was not printed in significant numbers and it has a number of really important first appearances. So you wanna grab one of these while it's still cheap. Next up, I have a couple of Punisher comic books. Both of these are really great. One of them is a key issue. 
one of them is more like a cover lover type of type of book that I've been obsessed with for like the last six months. And I was like, wow, I love that cover. And that's this one. This is Punisher number 102. Uh, it does have collectability. I'm not trying to say it doesn't because it's 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 a great cover. Uh, Frank Turan, Turan cover. It's bullseye and it's got uh, the reflection of the Punisher's skull, you know, shirt in the knife. And look at that creepy face. Look at that creepy face for Bullseye. Now, I also have the first appearance of Lady Bullseye. And this just this cover is just so fantastic. I love it. This is from 1995. And it says, The the Deadly Return of the One and Only Bullseye. And look at look how amazing that artwork is. So I saw this when I was kind of like doing research for Punisher key issues. And it's it's you know, you can you can pick it up for $150 to $200. I think I paid $176 for it. And I, you know, there's not a ton of them on the census either. That's the other reason I, I picked it up. It's a, it's got a lot of dark colors, especially at the bottom here where it shows every spine tick. Now, the other one is one that was recommended by team CGC 9.8. Shout out to Jerry. Uh, I, and I, I agree with him on this one. This is a great book. This is Punisher War Journal number six, and it's the first meeting of Wolverine and the Punisher. I can't remember if I've shown this on my channel or not. I, I, I have a hard time remembering what I show on Instagram versus what I show on my channel. And my Instagram is at action figure greater on, on Instagram. But this is the first, first meeting of Wolverine and Punisher. It's a great cover. Um, not particularly expensive right now. I did hit the bottom on this one. I got it for like 150 bucks and they've since bounced up to about 250. So really happy to pick this one up. I got this one from Jeff's Collectible Empire on eBay. Uh, we obviously know him within the Star Wars world, but he also does sell graded comics at auction, and I was lucky enough to get that one for a really great price. So shout out to Jeff. Jacob, thank you so much for uh, the awesome book. But these are a couple of really nice Punisher key issues that if you collect stuff other than Star Wars, these are two really nice ones to have. Next up, I've got a heavy hitter that I paired with a book I believe I've already shown on the channel. This is Star Wars number 39, part one of the Empire Strikes Back adaptation, movie adaptation. This is obviously a fantastic cover with Darth Vader on the cover there. Really great book. This is from September of 1980. Well, I got this one. And this is one I have mentioned on my channel as one to pick up. And I'm super happy to get this because there are not a lot of these on the census. This is Star Wars number 35 from May of 1980. This is the first face-to-face -face meeting of Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader in comics. What an epic book. And it kind of flies under the radar for the most part. Uh, I love this cover. It's got creepy kind of 1970s art style. Look at the pink eyes. I mean, and he's kind of like playing chess or checkers or whatever with all the main heroes. Dark Lord's Gambit. I mean, what an awesome, awesome book. Just amazing. Now, one of these sold on eBay in an auction in an old style case. And it was the older case. And it sold for $560. $560. And the reason is, is that there's not a lot of these on the census. There's only 51 of them. At the time when that one was sold... Uh, in the old case, again, for 560, there was only 39 of them. And so when that happened, I think people who had who were sitting on these, you know, uh, went ahead and got sent them to CGC. So there's now 51 of these on the census the last time I checked. And this one popped up for sale. And uh, and it was way less than that 560 price. And so I and it was and it was bet, make a make an offer. I saw it go up and I immediately made him an offer that I thought was fair and it was way below that that sales price and he took it. He took it immediately. So I want to say thanks to that seller. I wish I could remember his name, but uh uh it was a I believe a Canadian seller and he sent this and it was perfect. Absolutely perfect condition. And I I'm super excited to have that one. I think this is a book that is so stealthy. Nobody knows about it and and you know, given that there's only now, 51 on the census. It's just such an awesome book, and it looks so good next to Star Wars number 39 uh, with the, the beginning of the Empire Strikes Back adaptation. So just thought I'd kind of do a quick close-up of this book. But if you see number 35 come up for sale, uh, grab it, because there, there are not many of these on the census in the 9.8 grade. Next up, I've got another John Tyler Christopher action figure variant to pair with these two that I've already shown you on the channel. These were gifts from Boss Bounty. 
And man, thank you again, Tim, so much for these awesome books. We've got BT1 and we got Dr. Afra. And then uh, he also sent me Triple Zero, which is the other droid that is Dr. Afra's kind of like droid helper, murder droid, so to speak. Well, unfortunately, that one did not hit the 9.8 when I sent those in to get graded. So this one showed up on on eBay and I got it for 80 bucks and this is triple zero. So I've got all three of them now. I've got, I've got Dr. Afra, I've got triple zero and I've got BT one all with the John Tyler action figure variant covers, uh, in a 9.8 grade. So it's really awesome. It's Dr. Vader, uh, Darth Vader, Dr. Vader, Darth Vader, number 23, Darth Vader, number 24, and then Darth Vader, number 25 is Dr. Affer. Now, these are not like super key issues, I don't think, but they have gone up in price. Dr. Afra's JTC cover goes for about two hundred dollars. BT1, there's just there's only eleven of these on the census, I believe. And for triple zero, the last time I checked, there was twenty-three. So there are not a ton of these out there, but I think whenever Dr. Afra and BT1 and Triple Zero make their Disney appearance, these books are going to be in high demand. The Thrawn version for the JTC cover goes for about 300 bucks now, 250 to $300. Dr. Affers, as I mentioned, goes for about 200 So it's just natural to me that these two will go up eventually. And I got it for 80 bucks, and these two were gifts, amazing gifts from, from Boss Bounty. So pretty awesome to have all three of them now in the JTC cover. Let's finish it off with one massive book that is a, a big boy book for me, and then we'll wrap it up. Finally, I've got the matching book to go with uh, Knights of the Old Republic number 42. I picked this up last fall. Uh, great cover of Darth. I think I believe this is Darth Malak's first appearance, first full appearance, but it's also the origin of Revan of Darth Revan. And it's a fantastic cover that's been homaged here recently in War of the Bounty Hunters, but Malik Unleashed, Knights of the Old Republic. This is from June of 2009, a Dark Horse comic. So I got that last fall, but the one I really wanted, the one I really wanted was this one. And I finally got it in a fair price. This is Knights of the Old Republic number nine. This is from September of 2006. And this is the first full appearance of Revan. And it's an epic kind of timeless cover that I think I timed the price on really well. This hit almost $2,000 during the peak market back during uh, two, two, uh, 2021. Well, I got it for less than half that. I got it for a great, great price. It's just an awesome, awesome cover. A mega key issue. And if they ever do anything with Revan, which there are heavy rumors that they're going to, this book will skyrocket in price. So um, it's it's not really it's not really why I bought it. I didn't buy it because I'm planning on reselling it. I'm buying it because I'm keeping this in my collection probably till I'm dead. But it's it's just such an awesome book. But it's it was just too too expensive. Even January February on eBay you can find some closed sales for twelve hundred to fifteen hundred dollars. I got it for less than half that price. Uh, so I, I got it in a, a really lucky a really lucky final sales price. I'm very very happy to uh, to have it. But uh, wow, what an awesome book. So that's the first full appearance. And as we've talked about on my channel, the next one I want to get is Star Wars Tales number 23, which is the first cameo appearance of Revan and Malak, Darth Malak. So that's the least expensive out of all of them. So I, I picked up the two toughest ones to get already. So, so getting Star Wars Tales 23 with Wedge Antilles on the cover won't be nearly as expensive of a proposition as it was to get pick up these two, but very happy to have Revan's first or Revan's origin book as well as his first full appearance, and uh, they just look fantastic together. And once we get Star Wars Tales twenty three, then I think I'll have Revan pretty well covered if they ever do anything with him. That's all I really had for this video. I hope you enjoyed looking at some of these epic uh, Star Wars and other kind of comic line books that I've picked up over the last few months. Thanks again for watching and I'll be back soon.